The iPhone 12 Pro Max is the biggest iPhone Apple has ever made and it's also the best. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is the kind of product Apple only releases once in a while. The kind that looks different is built on a fundamentally new technology and will ultimately form the basis of future iPhones for years to come. It has an attractive new design, a straightforward and complete approach to 5G, good cameras and even better performance. The shiny outer rim looks fancy but it also a magnet for fingerprints. Essentially, the design of the 12 Pro Max is just a larger version of the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro and despite the size it still fits well in the hand and it's easy to hit Siri or screen lock button on the left and the volume keys on the right. The notch on the iPhone 12 Pro remains pretty large but the true depth camera still comes in very handy for face ID. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is also tougher this time around, you will get a ceramic shield display up front that's rated 4 times the drop performance as well as a better IP68 water resistance rating that goes down to 6 meters instead of 4 meters. With its 6.7 inch OLED display, the iPhone 12 Pro Max's OLED panel is smaller but brighter than the 6.9 inch Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This device also happens to offer the most color accurate display we have ever tested. The only thing missing from the iPhone 12 Pro Max is a smooth 120Hz refresh rate display. The iPhone 12 Pro Max offers the best cameras on any phone. It comes with quad rear camera setup, you will get 12 megapixel wide, ultra wide and a telephoto lens and also there is a time of flight 3D scanner. It has a larger main sensor than the iPhone 12 Pro which is designed to deliver an 87% improvement in low light conditions versus the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The main lens on the iPhone 12 Pro Max also features a fast 1.6 aperture and a lighter sensor for the faster autofocus. You also get a 2.5x optical zoom from the iPhone 12 Pro Max's 12 megapixel telephoto lens, which is behind the Note 20 Ultra's 5x zoom but is better than the 2x zoom on the iPhone 12 Pro. The camera does a superb job in low light. The iPhone 12 Pro Max camera's Smart HDR3 capability also did an amazing job. The iPhone 12 and Pixel 5 were more evenly matched in portrait, but the iPhone does a better job rendering face, especially in the shadow. You can take great selfies with the 12 megapixel front facing camera. However, the rear facing cameras deliver a much punchier performance and are especially impressive in mixed lighting conditions with natural skin tones and good ability to bring out low light detail. The result is simple, if you want to take the best pictures with an iPhone, you can't look anywhere else but the iPhone 12 Pro Max. You can record 4K video at 60fps and the video quality is mind blowing. When it comes to sheer performance, the A14 Bionic processor in the iPhone 12 Pro Max paired with 6GB of RAM has no equal. The gameplay remained as fluid and smooth as console. This phone supports every flavor of 5G including sub 6GHz and MMOF. One of the biggest reasons to buy the iPhone 12 Pro Max is the extra endurance you get from its larger battery. It comes with 3687mAh battery with 20W fast charge support. The Mate 40 Pro is almost bezel-less and has a dual selfie camera cutout on the top left side of the screen. You may be disappointed to know that the display has carved edges, which is indeed visually pleasing but often doesn't benefit the user experience and even creates problems, such as accidental touches. However, Huawei has said that the Mate 40 Pro has enhanced mistouch prevention algorithms. As for the overall design of the Mate 40 Pro, it's fairly standard. Its power and volume buttons are on the right side like they are on the most phones and the back of the Mate is very clean looking except for the camera module. Let's talk about the display because it deserves a lot of attention. It's a 6.76 inch OLED panel with 90Hz refresh rate. It's a beautiful piece of technology and if you don't mind the carved sides, you will be very pleased looking at it 24-7. The display of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro is very bright and the color accuracy is almost unprecedented. Clearly, it's one of the best features of this phone. At first glance, the performance of this phone is smooth and snappy. During our uses, we didn't experience any stutters but that was to be expected considering the processor and the GPU inside. Powering the Mate 40 Pro is Huawei's own Kirin 9000 processor and 8GB of RAM. That processor is also 5G ready, meaning the Huawei Mate 40 Pro is a 5G smartphone. According to Huawei, the Mate 40 Pro and Mate 40 Pro Plus also sport the most powerful GPU ever seen on a Huawei device. 
The main attraction on this phone is arguably the large donut shaped camera module on its back with big Leica branding. The camera app is intuitive and easy to use. You have up to 50 times zoom as well as an ultra wide camera which was to be expected from a 2020 flagship. Smartphone camera enthusiasts will be happy to know that along with night mode it also have a pro mode in the Mate 40 Pro camera app which lets you configure your photography settings manually if you wish to do so. The camera setup consists of three cameras, two of which are borrowed from the P40 Pro, the wide angle main camera and the telephoto one. The main camera here is 50 megapixel wide lens and it also have a 20 megapixel ultra wide lens and 12 megapixel periscope lens. Photos taken in broad daylight look really good. There are lots of details, the dynamic range is just great too. The ultra wide camera which is the new one is a pleasant surprise. It matches the quality of the main camera with no visible color shift or other disturbances when switching between the two. It's really great although not so ultra wide, it has an 18mm equivalent lens. The telephoto lens offers 5x optical zoom but what's really impressive is the 10x hybrid zoom. At times it's even better than the optical zoom. Speaking of software algorithms, the master AI takes care of all the settings depending on the scene you are shooting. Low light photography has always been one of Huawei's strongest features. The same applies to the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. The night mode algorithms are doing their job flawlessly and the results are something comparable to normal daylight shots. The selfie camera on the front produces nice photos with a healthy skin tone and a decent amount of detail. The Huawei Mate 40 Pro can shoot 4K videos at 60fps and you can also zoom in and out while recording. This option is usually resolution dependent but here you are free to use it in 4K or 1080p. Recorded videos are great too and the image stabilization isn't overly aggressive. As expected, instead of Google Play Store, we have Huawei's App Gallery to get our apps from this phone. There is a decent number of games and apps there, with some popular ones like TikTok and Viber present, although you will not find the likes of Facebook, Instagram or Skype. The Mate 40 Pro features a 4400 mAh battery that is more than capable of carrying the phone through two days. It comes with 66W fast, 50W fast wireless charge and 5W reverse wireless charge support. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is the most advanced big screen phone so far because it's much more than a phone. It's a highly evolved note taking device. Samsung has made its most elegant looking phone yet with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The squared of ages combined with the sophisticated mystic bronze color give this handset a corner of his vibe. The finish does a good job of resisting fingerprints. The massive 6.9 inch OLED Quad HD Plus display on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is big, bold and colorful. More importantly, this is the first Samsung phone to offer a dynamic 120Hz refresh rate. The display is exceedingly bright and is fairly easy to read in direct sunlight. When using the display, scrolling is super smooth and fast. You can always choose 60Hz manually if you want to save battery life. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra features triple rear camera setup plus a laser autofocus sensor. The camera array starts with a 108 megapixel wide camera with a 1.8 aperture and it's paired with a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with a 120 degree field of view. The 12 megapixel telephoto lens delivers a 5x optical zoom and up to a 50x super resolution zoom. The zoom lens delivers amazing quality. Every time you zoom into something, you will be surprised by the distance it covered and the details it captured. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's night mode is good but it's not quite as bright or colorful as the iPhone 11 Pro. Pictures taken with this device deliver stunning quality with great details and colors. The Note 20 Ultra delivered better results than the iPhone 11 Pro in close-up shots. If you want to record the sharpest video possible, you will be pleased to know that the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra can record 8K video with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. There's also a new pro video mode that lets you control the focus, exposure and zoom speed. The 12 megapixel selfie camera up front has a 120 degree field of view which should come in handy for group selfies. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra benefits from a swift 9ms response time for its S Pen which is designed to deliver more of a pen to paper feel when taking notes or drawing. It's one of the fastest Android phones around and it's one of the first handsets with Qualcomm Snapdragon's 865 Plus processor. This chipset boosts the clock speed by up to 10% 
to 3.1 GHz and the graphics is also 10% faster than the regular Snapdragon 865 chip inside the Galaxy S20. This processor is paired with 12 GB of RAM and either 128 GB or 512 GB of internal storage. As you would expect from a premium flagship, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra supports both flavors of 5G. You will also appreciate the improved DeX experience, which is now completely wireless. Now you can beam what's on your Galaxy Note 20 Ultra screen to a compatible smart TV. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra packs a pretty beefy 4500 mAh battery, which held up well in daily use. It comes with 25W fast charging. It also supports wireless charging and 9W reverse wireless charging. It offers a best-in-class display, a better S Pen experience and a boatload of new features for work and play. The cameras are stellar, fixing the focusing problem with the Galaxy S20 Ultra, and the powerful zoom and Xbox gameplay give the Note 20 Ultra an advantage over the upcoming iPhone 12. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra is a big smartphone in every dimension. In fact, it's not far off from the Samsung's recently released Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The Mi 10 Ultra is heavy and can be cumbersome if you don't have big hands and deep pockets. Xiaomi went with a glass sandwich design with aluminum rails and carved glass on both sides. On the front, there's a full-size display with a punch hole in the top left and a speaker grill above the glass. The Mi 10 Ultra is not IP certified, which is unfortunate. Other phones at this price point, particularly those from Apple and Samsung, offer protection from water and dust. Xiaomi opted for a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus 120Hz OLED panel instead of a Quad HD Plus screen. At this price, I don't think this is a problem given there are many amazing tech that's packed into the device. The panel is smooth and fast as well as vibrant with deep contrast. If you don't like the excellent adaptive color setting, you can change it in the comprehensive display settings menu. Brightness was quite good, even under direct sunlight, the Mi 10 Ultra was easily viewable. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra skips the fresh Snapdragon 865 Plus in favor of the regular 865. Either way, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra is very fast. I didn't have a single performance problem in my week with this device. I played lots of games, took many photos and did a lot of multitasking. I just couldn't get the Mi 10 Ultra to stutter. I think it's fair to say that whatever you do on your phone will be light work for this device. It comes with 8, 12 or 16 GB of RAM depending on the variation. Camera wise the Mi 10 Ultra comes with a quad camera setup. There's the main 48 megapixel main camera, a 20 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 12 megapixel portrait camera and finally a 120x ultra zoom camera. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra takes punchy and contrast heavy images with a fair amount of dynamic range. This device seems to be able to capture white balance well. On dull days the phone took dull photos, on bright days the phone took bright photos. The Mi 10 Ultra's biggest photography feature is its zoom functionality. Samsung offered 100x zoom in the S20 Ultra but the Xiaomi is offering 120x in the Mi 10 Ultra. I found the Mi 10 Ultra's night mode to be one of the worst I have ever encountered on a flagship smartphone. It struggled with flares, captured very little detail and was overall rather disappointing. On the front there is a single 20 megapixel camera for selfie duties. The Mi 10 Ultra takes some decent selfies but there is a fair amount of skin smoothing going on. Selfie portrait mode photos seem to look rather realistic. The Mi 10 Ultra's video is average at best. It's got 8K video at 24fps alongside the standard USD 60fps mode. There's also a 960fps slow motion mode. On the surface, the Mi 10 Ultra's battery is an average size for this class of smartphone. It's a 4500mAh cell in a device with 5 cameras, a power hungry chipset, and a big high refresh rate display. Xiaomi's software, however, works aggressively in the background, killing applications and optimizing power users to deliver good battery life. The device charged from 0 to 100% in just 21 minutes in our testing. It includes 120W fast charging, it also comes with 50W wireless charging and 10W reverse wireless charging. The Sony Xperia 1 Mark II comes with a 6.5 inch display that has a 4K resolution. It's a HDR OLED panel, however the company has included a new feature that will allow for a 90Hz effect on the screen, but it doesn't seem to use an actual 90Hz panel. Sony's latest flagship phone features a 3.5mm headphone jack on the top edge. The design is glass on the front and back, both of which are protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 6 technology, and it will come in either black or purple. It also has a full bezel at the top rather than a notch or punch hole. 
Inside the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, there is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 chipset, which is one of the very best processors on the market. It offers some strong performance and be able to cope with all the tasks that most other top-end phones can do. The phone comes with 8GB of RAM to keep it running. Storage-wise, you have got 256GB of space to play with here, and that's expandable with a microSD card. 5G is one of the big talking points of Xperia 1 Mark II, there is no 4G only variant of this phone. The camera is another idea Sony's put a spotlight on. The camera includes a 12 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel telephoto one with 3x optical zoom, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor, alongside a 3D time of flight sensor that will offer groundbreaking autofocus technology. It's using a technology that Sony developed for its alpha range of cameras, and the aim here is to give you the best shot through stronger autofocus. This technology can completely autofocus and auto exposure calculations at 60 frames per second, while the camera itself can take 20 shots in burst mode each second. But Sony claims it improves autofocus for low light conditions as well as in everyday shooting. The phone can also record video in 4K HDR at up to 60 FPS. Pictures are amazing with this camera with its stunning dynamic range and color accuracy. On the front of the phone, there is an 8 megapixel selfie camera and Sony announced they have made significant improvements for front facing shots. Sony has also made some big improvements to the battery on this device by increasing it to 4000 mAh on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, up from 3330 mAh on the Xperia 1. There is also fast charging here that will allow for up to 50% charge in 30 minutes. 